Okay, and so we have the commander after the drivetrain swap. The three liter diesel is in there. Uh, I've taken it on a couple trips already. Everything's working well. Still have some small kinks to figure out, but that's not due to the drivetrain swap. That's just general project car stuff. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so yeah, the engine, transmission, transfer case, all that is from the diesel Grand Cherokee. Airbox, a coolant tank is also from the Grand Cherokee. Um, fuse boxes from the Grand Cherokee. The only things that I changed up here was the winch setup. So obviously the winch I added. Um, I have these bus bars, positive and negative, for like off-road lights, for um, fog lights. Actually the fog lights are on the factory harness. But for CB radio, there's a CB antenna and rock lights and interior lights. And because I added this bus bar here, uh, the full size battery that came with the Grand Cherokee wouldn't fit um, in the tray. It was hitting the coolant line. So I put in the smaller battery. This is actually the battery out of the Hemi. Uh, other things I had to modify slightly. So the diesel engine its air conditioning compressor is right down there in the corner and coincidentally the air conditioning compressor for the hemi is also in that same spot now where that uh, where there's a slight difference is that the commander has a third row of seats and there's an extra uh, ac line that runs up here and to the rear passengers well, the Grand Cherokee doesn't have that. So this line from the Grand Cherokee wouldn't work for the rear passenger seat, uh, HVAC controls. But miraculously, this line is from the Grand Cherokee and it goes, I had to modify the engine cover slightly, but this line goes across the front of the engine and down to the air conditioning compressor. And the line from the Hemi bolts right up to the diesel engine. So got really lucky in that sense um, everything fits in here well as it would be from the factory apart from this so everything does work rest assured it's just uh, a lot of time uh, dedicated to swap everything over so some of the modifications i did to the drivetrain before i put it in uh, is only emissions related so the dpf uh, is coated out, EGR coated out and removed, swirl motor removed, swirl flaps physically removed, and the hole is welded up. Um, no catalytic converter. The exhaust is now 3 inch 307 stainless from the turbo all the way to the back. Um, let's see if I can get a quick shot of the exhaust. So there's the exhaust. And uh, it sounds really good. When you're driving long distances, I would say over four hours, um, a little bit quieter would be nice. Luckily, I still have the factory uh, diesel exhaust here with the muffler so I'm going to put a v-band in the exhaust so that this muffler is easy to put in and take out for the long drives and uh, even the exhaust the exhaust has hangers here hangers there hangers there and uh, the locations for all these hangers were already present on the commander I didn't have to weld anything in it was just this exhaust I had on the commander at first it was just take this exhaust off the Grand Cherokee, slap it in the Commander, everything bolted up. Perfect. I'll fire it up for you and let you hear what it sounds like. So right now the engine's on high idle, it'll stay like this for a couple minutes, 
once the engine warms up a little bit then it automatically goes down to the middle level and then uh, it'll stay on the middle level for a little bit and then it'll go down even more so excuse the dirtiness I just got back from an off-roading trip so um, on the interior I had to take a whole dash out because the engine wiring harness went uh, all the way to here but then you have to put the Grand Cherokee harness all on the inside here so uh, the gauge cluster is from the Grand Cherokee as well the radio is from the Grand Cherokee all this is actually from the commander still this is one of the only commander parts that remains because it has the uh, rear seat climate control button uh, it still has the tow haul mode button from the commander but uh, it doesn't do anything anymore you press it nothing happens um, the gear shift assembly is from the Grand Cherokee uh, so this center console also has to be taken out to replace the wiring under here the rear seats but in the back there those need to be taken out because there's a wiring harness that goes all the way back there so there are two lights on the dashboard one of them is uh, the battery light and the other one is the engine light luckily I know what both issues are the battery light is um, the car does charge but I put in an alternator with uh, two, it has two wires going to it and I should have put in with only one they gave me the wrong alternator I was going on a trip and I needed that working ASAP so uh, that's a simple fix I just need to put in the correct alternator and the engine light is for an oxygen sensor code um, that the oxygen sensor is not functioning the heater one thing that's been really helpful in this whole swap has been this um, combined with the JSCAN app this is a Bluetooth OBD2 scan tool and it works very well for Jeep vehicles I'm able to um, check codes on all modules the, end, the powertrain control module transmission module uh, the electronic locking diffs um, radio everything airbags so whenever I had a warning for anything I was able to open up with the scan tool and read exactly what that warning was for and fix it and so the Jeep after the engine swap um, I've had some time driving it. I've put about 5,000 kilometers on the Jeep already. With the diesel engine and diesel transmission, the best fuel economy I've gotten, and that's with uh, all highway driving, with everything on the roof and the back fully kitted out for off-roading. Uh, only highway driving at average 10.2 is the best that I've uh, got liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, the second time was 10.8 liters per hundred kilometers uh, so that's very good for highway driving city driving uh, or I should say mixed it's about 13 and then city driving is closer to 15 liters per hundred kilometers I recently took it on a off-roading trip um, it was about 400 kilometers there we went on trails for two days and then 400 kilometers back and the Jeep averaged 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers for the trip. So I'm very happy with that. It uh, is a lot better than what it was with the Hemi. The Hemi would have averaged about 22, 20 liters per 100 kilometers for the trip. So not great. Maybe I could have stretched it to 18. But once you start putting stuff on the roof and you get the slow rock crawling, uh, that engine really was burning lots of fuel. So very happy with the fuel economy. The power... I like the diesel power better than the Hemi. The Hemi is a faster motor, um, no question about it. If you're at a red light and you raced this versus the Hemi, the Hemi would beat this in a race. However, this uh, three liter diesel has been tuned, so it's a lot quicker than what you would think, and the torque is really nice. When you're at a stoplight and you floor it, the whole nose picks up and uh, it feels a lot faster than it is uh, com uh, combined with the fuel economy I'm very happy with the power and the whole outcome of the swap uh, if you have any questions comment down below I'd be more than happy to help you guys out um, also if you have anything you want to see specifically whether it's off-roading videos or um, 
pictures or videos from the swap. I've got lots of that saved away. So hit me up and uh, yeah, there'll be lots to come, lots of content with the Jeep to come because I'll be using it a lot. Thanks.